Best known for their pre-built gaming PCs and cases, NZXT is stepping into the audio realm with their brand new capsule microphone. A simple USB mic with a sleek design, the NZXT capsule was designed to be plug-and-play streaming mic with a massive 25mm cardioid capsule designed for speech. And of course we are using it to record this entire video and we'll put it up against some competition a little bit later, so be sure to stay tuned and let's dive in and check it out. Thanks for watching 9 to 5 Toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9to5toys, and today we do have the NZXT Capsule USB Microphone. Right out of the box, the Capsule mic has a sleek modern design that will fit in at any desk. Up top is that massive 25mm condenser capsule with a built-in pop filter and shock mount. Just below the black grille are the controls for gain, which also include a push to mute button, and the headphone volume dial. Around the bottom of the microphone is an LED light that glows white when the mic is active and red when muted. While not as visible as if it were on top of the microphone, this is still a very quick and easy way to tell when the mic is active or not. And on the bottom of the microphone are a USB-C port, a 3.5mm headphone out, and a quarter inch mount. And also included in the box is a quarter inch to 3 8 inch adapter, which enables the microphone to be mounted on most boom arms. The stand has a modern rounded design with some decent weight to it, weighing in at 883 grams for the mic and the stand combined. One of the most unique things about the design is how the stand can be removed. There's this little button on the back that when pressed will release the stand. And NZXT has also included a quick release cover that can be installed where the stand is removed, making for a very sleek design to mount onto a boom arm. My only complaint with the design is really that it sits kind of low, but this is pretty standard across all these kind of streaming podcast USB microphones. Uh, and so I feel like I have to have my chair sitting a little bit low. I have to, you know, tilt it up and maybe kind of uh, lean over a little bit to get close enough to it because I do want to keep it about six inches away from my mouth. Um, but of course, you can always mount it on a boom arm as well with that included adapter. And the boom arm that I've been using for the last about two years was a super cheap one from Amazon. And I will link that down in the description. I'll link my review if you want to check that out. But NZXT is also going to be coming out with their own uh, boom arm, which is obviously going to be made for the capsule mic. And if we have a link for that, I'll put it down in the description. But if not, be sure to stay tuned to 9to5toys.com as I'm sure we will feature it on there as well. So one of the biggest differences with other streaming and podcast kind of microphones is that there's no software required or really even available for the NZXT capsule. You know, some other really popular mics like the Blue Yeti X rely pretty heavily on some processing power through the Blue Voice app, which is a part of their Logitech G Hub software. And that can be great if you do want to make a bunch of tweaks and add a bunch of effects and do different things. Uh, but NZXT's kind of, you know, design idea behind this was to make it as simple as possible. So it's a very simple microphone uh, meant for just plug and play. The microphone sounds great right out of the box. You know, the volume is automatically set to 50% when you do plug it in. So really they just wanted to make it as simple and easy to get up and running. There aren't even different polar patterns on here like there are on a lot of other, you know, streaming and kind of podcast microphones like the Quadcast S or the Blue Yeti X. So NZXT opted to, you know, just forget all that stuff, put a huge capsule in here, try to get the best sounding voice and make it as easy to use as possible. And the microphone also has a built-in pop filter, which in my experience has worked pretty well as long as you stay about six inches away from it. If you do get closer, it can start to still get, you know, a few of those plosives, you'll get a little, you know, a few little pops in there. And then the microphone also has a built-in shock mount. So here we'll just kind of hit the desk a little bit so you can hear how those booms are transferred to the microphone. And you can still pick them up a little bit, uh, but I do think it does a pretty good job of knocking out some of that stuff, especially when compared to something like the HyperX SoloCast, which we'll see in the comparison here coming up. And so with that pop filter and shock mount, I do think that the microphone sounds really great, you know, right out of the box. Uh, with my vocals, you know, I feel like it doesn't add too much harshness or too, it doesn't make them too boomy either. It just gives it a really natural sound. But of course, if you do still want to make some tweaks to it, then you can use third-party software to do that. Uh, but right out of the box, me personally, I, I think that this microphone sounds great. And so up until this point, we've been recording with this microphone and I haven't put any effects on it. But here I'll give you an example of what it could sound like with just a few light effects. So typically when I'm editing in Premiere Pro, I'll drop a little bit of a compressor on it, maybe just a few EQ tweaks and then a limiter as well, just to make sure that I'm not peaking anywhere. And so hopefully with you know these couple of effects, it can give you a good idea of what it might sound like with just some light effects on the NZXT capsule. All right, and next let's put it up against the competition and see how it compares. So we have the Blue Yeti 
Yeti X, we have the HyperX Quadcast S, and we have the HyperX SoloCast. And these are all mics that we've already done dedicated reviews of. I'll link those down in the description if you wanna check them out. But here we'll read the same excerpt so you can get an idea of what these different microphones sound like just straight out of the box with no effects on them. And I'll make sure it's about the same distance from my mouth uh, before recording any of these. While reports have suggested the Apple Watch Series 7 is facing production issues, Apple is reportedly still planning to announce the new device alongside the iPhone 13 as soon as next week. According to Bloomberg, Apple plans to move forward with the announcement, but that the Apple Watch Series 7 will be available in severely limited quantities at launch. All right, so here we have the Blue Yeti X. Uh, it has that Blue Voice software through the Logitech G Hub. I'm not using any of that though, so this is just straight through the microphone, just you know, kind of the raw audio. And I'll make sure I'm bad about the same distance, and we'll read that same excerpt. Where reports have suggested the Apple Watch Series 7 is facing production issues, Apple is reportedly still planning to announce the new device alongside the iPhone 13 as soon as next week. According to Bloomberg, Apple plans to move forward with the announcement, but that the Apple Watch Series 7 will be available in severely limited quantities at launch. And kind of like how we tested the shock mount on this, I also just want to kind of bang on the desk a little bit so you can get an idea of what the uh, internal shock mount, or lack thereof, does on the Blue Yeti X as well. So hopefully that gives you a good idea there. All right, and now we are on to the HyperX Quadcast S. Obviously it does have that built-in shock mount, which is a pretty cool feature on this, and it has the glowing RGB, uh, which might be cool or not, depending on your setup. And so here we're gonna read that same excerpt, and I'll make sure it's about the same distance from my mouth. While reports have suggested the Apple Watch Series 7 is facing production issues, Apple is reportedly still planning to announce the new device alongside the iPhone 13 as soon as next week. According to Bloomberg, Apple plans to move forward with the announcement, but that the Apple Watch Series 7 will be available in severely limited quantities at launch. And here we will do that same shock mount test, just so you can kind of get an idea of what that kind of sounds like with impacts on the desk. All right, and lastly for this comparison, we have the HyperX SoloCast, uh, which is what I've been using for the last uh, little while recording VOs for all my other videos. Uh, so if you've listened to a video in the last, I don't know, few months, then this is definitely the one that you've seen and heard. Uh, so here we're going to read that same excerpt. While reports have suggested the Apple Watch Series 7 is facing production issues, Apple is reportedly still planning to announce the new device alongside the iPhone 13 as soon as next week. According to Bloomberg, Apple plans to move forward with the announcement, but that the Apple Watch Series 7 will be available in severely limited quantities at launch. And here we'll do that same uh, kind of impact test and see how shock mount does on the HyperX SoloCast. All right, and hopefully that gives you a good idea of how that performs. So as you can maybe tell in there, you know, a lot of these microphones aren't gonna sound that different unless you're using like a really good pair of headphones and really doing some critical listening. So it's kind of reassuring that, you know, Picking any of these microphones, you can't really pick a bad one. They're all gonna sound good, uh, but they all have their own little features that kind of set them apart. And so what that gives you is, you know, you can kind of just, you know, choose your brand or feature that you really want or need for your setup. If you need a really robust shock mount because you have, you know, lots of impacts on your desk, you're constantly hitting it or something, then definitely check out the HyperX Quadcast S. If you want something really small and discreet, but still sounds great, then you know check out the HyperX SoloCast. There aren't a ton of features there, uh, but it's small and performs really well and sounds very good in my opinion. If you want some really deep audio customization, then the Blue Yeti X might be the best option for you because of all that control built into the Blue Voice app, which is a part of the Logitech G Hub. But if you want a very simple plug and play, no hassle, great sounding microphone, that's also arguably one of the best looking, I would say, out of the lineup, then the NZXT capsule mic is gonna be the best choice for you. I do think that the NZXT maybe has the best kind of clarity and presence. Um, I, I think it absolutely sounds great for spoken word, for voice, um, but unlike these other microphones, you know, it doesn't have really any other features that kind of set it apart. And of course, the only other thing to keep in mind here is price. So the NZXT capsule microphone is available for $130. The Blue Yeti X you can get for $140 right now. The HyperX Quadcast S is $160, with the regular Quadcast being like $138, $139, I believe. And then the HyperX SoloCast is available for just $50. Uh, so really, you know, depending on your price range and what kind of features you're looking for, you know, that might kind of dictate, you know, which is the best option for you and your setup. Overall, just wrapping up here, I mean, because of its very simple plug and play nature, uh, this is gonna be appealing to people who don't wanna hassle with any sort of you know extra software. They just want something that's gonna work and it's gonna sound great and also look great. 
and the NZXT capsule mic is a great option for that. It doesn't necessarily have any single feature that, you know, sets it above, you know, any other microphone. You know, it doesn't have a crazy shock mount or crazy software or anything, uh, but what it does, I think it does really well. I think it's probably the best looking condenser microphone that we've checked out. Some really cool design features on here. I love the little light ring at the bottom. Uh, I think it looks really modern and really sleek, which might matter to you and your streaming setup, or maybe not. And it, of course, sounds great as well. But as we kind of noticed in that lineup comparison, all these microphones sound pretty good. All right, and that'll do it for our review of the NZXT Capsule Microphone. Thank you so much for watching, and let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5Toys.